In this video, we're going to work on two more of the leaves section. As I mentioned when we were making leaves three, the middle leaves, there are five sections in total to the leaves. Now we're going to make two and four. They go on either side of the middle. They're the, exactly the same except, of course, they'll be mirror images. Now one thing that's a little bit different about leaves two and four from leaves three is that the back to each section is different from the front to each section. So you can see on the template here that there is one that says leaves two and four back and then this one over here that says leaves two and four front. And so the only difference, the shapes are exactly the same. The only th difference is the length of this little piece here. On the front, it is a quarter of an inch longer. So you'll want to make sure that when you cut this out, you cut out two of each piece and you leave label one set leaves two and one le set leaves four. And make sure when you label them, you've got them in mirror images. One thing I want to reiterate is that the dimensions that you see in green around the edge are only used to cut the little uh, perimeter pieces that we use to create depth to the leaves. They do not refer to how long each one of these sections is on the template. They may uh, be exactly the same, but uh, more than likely they are not. So don't pay attention to the dimensions that you see here when you're actually cutting out these templates. They are not meant for that purpose. So we'll cut these out of medium weight chipboard. And then we also want to cut uh, for the perimeter pieces. We'll need about five pieces of medium weight chipboard that is 3 8 inch wide. Make sure your stiffness is going in the lengthwise direction. You'll need, for each of the sets, you'll need a piece of uh, chipboard that is one half inch wide at two inches long. Just a little snippet for each, each one. One goes on leaves two and one goes on leaves four. Then to join our 3 8 inch strips, we have uh, cut some cardstock that is 3 8 of an inch wide and I've backed that with score tape. If you don't have 3 8 inch wide score tape, just still cut your strips 3 8 inch wide. Just put quarter inch score tape on there. That'll be fine. Then also I'm still working with the set of quarter inch uh, uh, medium weight cardstocks. I'm sorry, medium weight chipboard strips that I cut when I was working on leaves three. These will be used for uh, ledger pieces when we put the second side on to each of the leaves. And then we also need some of our regular cardstock joining strips that are cut three quarter inch wide, scored in the middle, and have a quarter inch score tape applied on both sides. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to cut our little perimeter pieces that we need to go around the outside. And what we're going to do is use these measurements that are on the diagram and cut one piece for each of the measurements that you see as you go along here. And we cut those from the 3 8 inch wide, except for this one here that's 2 inches, and that's the strip that's going to get cut at uh, from one half inch wide medium weight chipboard. So I'm going to um, cut those pieces and then I'll be back to construct the perimeter. I'm back. I have all my pieces cut. I think you can see them sitting up here along the top of my work surface. I have aligned them in order starting with my 1 and 1 8 piece uh, because that's where I'm going to start to build the perimeter. And I'm keeping this sheet out so that I can make sure that I get all the, the inner bends and the outer bends, I call them the, the innies and the outies, in the right direction as I work around here. So starting out with the 1 and 1 8 piece and the 1 and 1 quarter inch piece, I can see that that's an inside bend. And what I like to do when I make an inside bend 
is to put that on the non-writing side of the uh, chipboard. And that way if I follow that scheme of putting them on the uh, innies on the non-writing side and the outies on the writing side, um, it helps me stay kind of in order and know what I'm doing. So I'm just cutting off some little strips of my 3 8 inch cardstock piece that has the score tape on it and I'm using my um, my a line on my cutting mat to make sure that I keep these uh, in, in line and every time I make the join I butt them up one right next to each other. Now when I make that join if there's anything overhanging from the, the joining strip I just get that a little haircut before I move on and then give a little bend where that bend is and then put this up on my mat and I can see that I'm proceeding along the way I should. So then I'll just move along um, and I'll do uh, up till we get to, to the three quarters with you on camera so that you see the difference when you make uh, an outer bend. So again this number uh, adding this one inch piece that's an inside bend so I'm going to add my little piece of joining strip on the non-writing side, two non-writing sides here together. Make sure I've got a good butt joint there. Put them together and then if I need to give it a little trim I do. And then fold it on that joint. Now when we come up to this three quarter inch one it's bending outwards. So if I take this, add it onto my little string here and now if I know that outer joins I can see the writing then when I put my little joining strip on if I put it on the side where I can see the writing then I know that I have that joint made the right way. So I'll put that on there. Sometimes I flip it over once I have it stuck on there just so I can see to butt my two pieces together nicely. That one only needs a little haircut. And now you can see that we've got that joint going out the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to just continue working my way around here, um, checking and making sure I get everything in order. I'll add this eight and a quarter inch piece on and then I'll stop. I will not add this two inch piece on at this time. So I'll be back after I've got my perimeter joined. When you're finished all of your sides with writing will be on the outside and that's what one way you can keep track if you're joining things properly or not. I also want to show you that you can build it using this template here no matter if you're making leaves two or the mirror image leaves four. Let's look at that for a minute. So here are leaves two back and leaves four back. Now when I write on them like that, that that's what I consider to be the outside of the piece. So that when I am going to build it and put this perimeter on which goes on the inside, I have also written inside on the backs of these two pieces. So you can see I have the mirror image here and I can use this that I just built either going on this direction or if I flip it without any changes it will work as the perimeter for the other one. So let me get this out of the way and we'll start with building leaves two. That's leaves two, so get leaves four, put that to the side for right now. So here I have my perimeter and knowing before I start adding my uh, joining strips to this, I want to mark to say to myself which side I want to put them on. 
and how they're going to go is being like an L formation from the perimeter to the inside of the back here. So what I want to do is just make myself a little reference arrow and I'll show you this as soon as I finish drawing it. That is pointing down. See the arrow right here with my thumb? That arrow is pointing down so I know that that's the edge that I want to add my joining strips to. So I've laid this all out like a snake. We don't need that for a second. And we're, it's time to add our joining strips on here. Now, what we want to do is put this basically so it one edge sits on the perimeter and then the side we're going to attach to our piece of chipboard goes at the bottom. In order to do that, we can do it in long continuous strips until we get to where there's an outer join. So what I like to do is just take my Sharpie and kind of darken those outer joins just so that I can proceed along here and uh, uh, without having to stop and check all the time. So what I'm going to do is measure a piece up to the first outer join, cut that off, attach one side keeping that bottom edge aligned, and making sure that the, the little platform piece is on the side that I drew my arrow on. So I'm going to proceed along and add these pieces and then I'll be back to talk about the next step. So I'm back. I think you can see that I have added those strips on as I just said. The next, and then I have also burnished along the length. And now I'm going to check the top edge and see if anything is hanging over on this top edge. And if it is, I'll give it a, a little haircut. Um, we don't want anything hanging over. The, both of these things are 3 8 inch wide, so sometimes you'll need to make some little corrections like that. Mine seem to be good, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to flip this over so I can see the other side. And now where any of the inner joins are, and that's where there isn't a little break here, I'm going to just snip with my scissors to, to that chipboard wall. We just need to make a little release cut there so that all of these people, pieces will be able to uh, bend around the perimeter. I'm just going to keep the camera going because it only takes a, a second to do all of these. Okay, so now it's time to join. And what I, uh, I'm going to start down here. This piece uh, that says that is only measures about oh, a, a little bit less than an inch. There's a piece that's an inch and an eighth that's going to join to it. And what we want to do with that piece is cut it back on an angle because the top part, this is where it's a little bit longer. As you might recall, I said that that's the difference between the, the two pieces. So what we want to do is cut this back at an angle and I'm just going to cut it back at about oh, a 45 degree angle. I'll show you that here in a second. So I have cut this back so that the top length, the, the, the top side, side without the joining strip, still remained the inch and an eighth, but then I cut this back at about a, a 45 degree angle there. So I'm going to join this to the um, template piece that we've cut out of the chipboard and 
what I usually like to do is just go ahead and take uh, off all of the score tape backing and just kind of handle it, not pushing anything down, uh, just very hard to begin with, just kind of temporarily making, making those connections and work from both directions um, to get that on and it's just a matter of, I'll take off one strip, a couple strips here and just show you what what we're going to do. We're going to line up the edge of this perimeter piece with the edge of the chipboard. So it's sitting on top of this chipboard piece but it's in alignment here. Let's see if I stick this underneath there. This is right, the two pieces, the wall of this, the perimeter is right in line with the cut edge of the template piece. So I'm going to work my way around and then I'll be back to show you what's next. So I finished putting around my perimeter pieces I have, and I've burnished them down well. I wanted to take a moment just to tell you about this tool I have here. I believe it's meant to be working with the, the Cricut um, die cutting machine, but I find it handy as kind of a, an undo thing for um, when I have score tape. If I haven't burnished too hard, I can work this tool in and lift something up that didn't get attached in the right place. Now I'm usually careful to put pressure on it only in this direction and not sideways because um, it's it's a little more you know it's not meant for that purpose so you want to be a little gentle but it's a very handy tool and then if adhesive will build up on here uh, usually from from the score tape and then just take a little alcohol wipe and clean that off because um, it works a lot better if it's nice and clean so um, we've got this done now it's time to add our little two inch piece and you can see I've already prepped this with a piece of the uh, cardstock joining strip and what I'm going to do is just this piece fits on an angle in here but what I'm going to do is just, just to start with just line it up with the edge just like we did with all the other pieces and then it's going to come out here and just make a little angle um, because remember the outside piece is bigger. So um, we can put a little strip of the joining in this in here. It's a little tricky sometimes to get the angle worked out at what what angle it should be to get that in there. Or you can put a little dab of glue or something, just something that'll kind of support that angle and then trim off any excess that's up here. And so now we have the inside made. Um, and so before we put the outside piece on here, I would encourage you to take your other uh, leaves back and do the same thing on this one. So then you know for a fact that you have made two and they will be in um, the mirror image that you need. So stop at this point after you've done this one, put the perimeter on the, the other one and get it to that point and then come back to add the front side on. So here's my front and you can see that it fits right on top of there even where um, because we cut this at an angle it fits right the, on there at the angle. Now in order to make it easier to join this I like to put some little uh, ledger strips that give me more of a gluing surface when I go to add the, the 
the front to the inside so that I'm not just gluing on on this edge and this this process takes oh maybe about five minutes to do and to me it's worth the investment because it just makes it so much easier to put it together so let's see how to accomplish that I'll put the this inside of the the back to the side for a minute and you recall a few minutes ago I said that I always write the word inside on the inside oh except for apparently this time um, so let me just do that Ooh, I love it when my mistakes are on film anyway so I've marked it on the inside and then and if I hadn't you just would pick this up mark on the inside and then turn it over because if I don't do something like that, invariably what happens is that I start adding the ledger strips on the outside because I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. Especially when you're working on in mirror images, it, it becomes challenging sometimes to remember what's what. So what we're going to do with these little quarter, these are just quarter inch strips of medium weight chipboard that I've cut, and I'm going to put them along uh, the, the edge of the, the front piece, but I'm going to hold them back from the edge, I would say a little bit more than the, the width of the chipboard, and I say a little bit more to allow for, you know, in some cases we've got two layers of cardstock coming along the, um, the inside of this perimeter to hold it together. So if we hold this back just a little bit more than the width of the chipboard, then that will be uh, just about the right amount of space for, uh, att for having that channel to attach. So what I'm going to do is cut pieces and I, I may not do them for each and every one of these lines. I'll probably do it for most of them because like I said it only takes well, maybe about five minutes max to cut them and glue them in place and get that prepared and then I'll be back to show you how to join the two pieces. I finished putting those little ledger strips all around the perimeter and I've zoomed in here a little bit so hopefully you can see that. Now I have a pretty uh, practiced eye at gauging at that amount of space. If you don't, just make your, yourself a little guide strip that is a piece of chipboard with one or two little layers of your cardstock on it and use it as a kind of a little measuring tool as you go to put, put them on. I think you'll find that the process goes pretty quickly. You don't have to be... Uh, you know they don't have to meet exactly you just snip little pieces just so you have something to help guide um, the the piece to go fit on nicely onto the other half so we're ready to join and what I'm going to do is just run a bead of glue on on the the front piece all along this channel here working my way around and then we will attach it to um, the back side. Now, as soon as I find, yeah, here's my craft knife. I, I usually use a craft knife if I have an extra one with an older blade in it. That's handy so I don't, I don't ruin a good blade. But that's, it's helpful to have a craft knife or something really thin um, and pointed like that in case you have to pull out any of the pieces um, to make them fit properly as you move along. Now I'm going to work without a, a mat down here. Um, this usually isn't a messy process unless the glue starts, uh, gets an air bubble in it and starts spitting. We'll see here if I get lucky that way or not. I'm just working my way around, putting a bead of glue in that kind of little channel between the edge and where the little ledger strips are. This fine line gluer that I have is real handy for jobs like this. I can see where that needle end goes and it puts out just the right amount of glue for this kind of an operation. Okay. So 
So I usually like to start kind of on this longer edge just because it gives it a nice long straight place to work on and kind of hold that together and then just start working my way around. Sometimes you put it down, sometimes you pick it up. But by having that, that ledger strip in, I think you can see just how easily this is, is going together. I mean, I'm just basically squeezing it and moving around. Now, when I get down here to this angle piece, I just kind of need to encourage that to be on the line there. I might have to put a little extra pressure there. And so I'm, I'm just holding pressure on this, this, this angle piece right here. Maybe this is a good grip for it to keep it in the right place. And then just kind of making sure that my glue is staying engaged all the way around here. Now if your edges aren't all perfectly nice, if some of your corners are a little, little, you know, less than what you'd like them to be, you are not to worry because we are going to put a finishing band around, around this edge um, before we put on our decorative paper. So it is, uh, everything doesn't have to be, uh, exactly perfect. Of course you'd like to have it as as good as you can get it, um, but just kind of work your way around making sure everybody is in alignment. And then we will set this aside to dry. Of course if you're working on the first one you'll go ahead and put the front on the second section. Let that dry thoroughly and then we'll be back. So now that we have our sections made, let's add some finishing strips. And what we're going to use for this is, I'm going to use green cardstock that I've cut an inch and a quarter wide, and then I've scored it at 3 eighths and then at 7 eighths, which creates a half inch channel down the center, which is just the right width to go around the edge of the uh, leaf section. And what I'm going to do is, it, it takes two pieces to do this. We don't have to go uh, underneath the, the whole um, inside of this L section. We do want to come up about an inch on the back and just come back in about an inch on the front here. But other than that, there's no need to do um, the rest of this inside because it will be next to the slip case. I'm back. You can see I've stopped at this point. The first thing I'm going to do is make a release cut at that corner just like uh, we usually do but you'll notice that you want to make they won't be in alignment because of the angle cut here so make sure when you cut the release cut you cut it up to the corner on each side. What we're just looking for is a way to neatly wrap this corner and this this way seems to have worked for me. You can, if you think there's another way, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just go ahead and secure the back piece down, just like before. Now this corner is going to, and I'm just going to cut off some of this excess so it can get out of our way here. What I just want to do is press this corner up so it makes uh, a nice uh, little bend right along the angle there. Now, I know before I fasten that down, I'm just going to take another little strip of some of this excess that I have and put a piece right along the edge here. right along the edge on the short side because that side when this folds over isn't going to have any 
any of the green right by it. So I'm going to just do that there. This can just settle where it wants to on the on this on the inside here. And then coming around to this side, we have to we have some excess down here at this corner. And so I'm just going to come back in here at an angle. Trim that off. and then fold that over. So now I have that inside angle, there you can see it I think, covered covered pretty nicely. The inside isn't going to show, a little bit of the outside will show. So this is what the two leaves two and four look like. You can see the difference here that the mirror image creates. One is angled uh, one way and one is angled the other, other way. Other than that, they are both exactly the same. And I finished putting my uh, uh, finishing strips around the outside and giving them a good burnish. And so now let's just see now this is starting to come together. So we have three of our leaf sections done. And that's what the tree's looking like from the top. It's not very pretty yet because it doesn't have its decorative paper on. But um, so we still need to build uh, leaves one and five to give even a little more dimension to our tree. And so that is what will come next.